Welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host Kristen and today we are making a simple baby hat and then I will show you after we cast that one off and show you how to do that I will show you how to make a decreased crown for the baby hat. We're going to start by making a slip knot in our yarn of choice and I have put this into a cut up straw. That's all this is and it's going to help me get through in between the pegs. I'm using a 24 peg loom today and these little knobs here, these little red parts are switched out from another loom and it's going to help me do my decreased crown. So if you want to stick around for the end of this video and see how to do the decreased crown instead of a drawstring bind off, you're welcome to do that. So uh, we're going to ignore those colored ones. We're going to start by making a slip knot. And we're going to wrap this around our finger, take the back over the front and back over the front again, making our slip knot. And this is a this is for a newborn, so I don't want a brim. And the reason why I don't want a brim is because it's harder on their heads and this makes it stretchier no matter what their size is. I'm going to actually put this on my starter peg and I'm gonna go from the top side and to the starter peg this way. And we will work that into our design and this way you don't have a um it actually this knot this knot will fall out the way we're going to do it and you won't have any knots in the beginning of your hat so we're going to make an e-wrap and if you've never loomed before you're going to take your yarn from the back side of a peg and you're going to wrap it around like a cursive e so we're going in the back side and all your work will come through this middle part and then what is seen on this side is called the right side of the work and this is the pretty side or the front of your hat. So we're going to wrap around the next peg, go between these two pegs, go back around and continue. And if you will start wrapping and having your yarn at the bottom of these pegs here, then you will notice the next time you go around, it will be easier and you don't have to um, push these down. And while I'm doing this, I actually, from this back side, if you'll notice, I just take my finger and I lay this yarn down. I continue helping myself wrap. Okay, so now I've come around again. And uh, this is called casting on. And we're getting all this locked onto our pegs, making essentially the first stitch. We go back around again. And you don't have to have a yarn guide. I just like to use it uh, when I'm e-wrapping. And the e-wrap stitch is a stocking net. It's a form of a regular knit stitch and it will curl and that's why your brim will have a curl on it. If you want it to not curl, you'll have to use a series of pearls. And I have a video on my site called how to um, knit a pearl, how to, how, to, uh, how to make a pearl stitch. So, um, the combination of the pearl actually sends the fabric to the other side. And uh, if you use a series of a row of knit and a row of pearl, a row of knit and a row of pearl, that makes a garter stitch and helps it from actually making a rolled brim. So we're going to continue on. Go ahead and knit the bottom loop over the top. And that, if you do this last one first, that will lock it in. So if you have to set this loom down and continue on, it's not going to jump off the pegs. And go ahead and knit this one over. Now, when you first do it, it may be a little tight. You can go ahead and take that starter one off and then knit this over. And then now, see your beginning tail? Go ahead and pull that out. That little slip knot is out. And we're going to work that in on our next row. So go ahead and continue along knitting over everything. This hat size will fit a newborn baby. Um, it's supposed to fit three to six months, but it depends upon the child. Oops. Generally, it's a newborn. If you have a preemie, you may even have to go down to the 12 peg flower loom. Uh, but the preemie hats need anywhere from a 9 to 10 inch uh, head, that's a head circumference, um, which the hat circumference is going to be uh, 7 and a half. 
So you're going down a, a couple of inches in circumference so the hat stays on nice and snug. So we're gonna push this down all the way around, pushing down our row. Sometimes I'm a tight knitter, so it takes me a moment. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and e-wrap this first stitch. And then now that we have this working strand, but I mean, uh, this is our working strand, the strand that's coming from the yarn, but we have this beginning strand back here. And what I want is to have this beginning strand because it's coming out of this peg here, it's gonna go on to our next peg. So I'm going to now grab it and use it at the same time with my working strand and I'm going to e-wrap around. And on this particular part only, I wanna make tight because I wanna make sure that that's not going anywhere. So I wanna make sure that's tight, these two ones are tight and then it draws this together. So it's more seamless. So continue going around and once you've got mm, a good amount of pegs going, this little straggler here is just gonna lay back. And you'll end up either weaving it into the back of your hat or you can uh, actually cut it off at that point because it's locked in, it's not going anywhere. If this is your first time to ever loom, you'll find that making hats like this are very easy and they're great for donating to hospitals, uh, but you can start increasing your knowledge and skills by learning new stitches. Go ahead and knit all these over. And as you learn new stitches and develop, you'll be able to branch out in lots of other projects. And learning how to do a hat is essential to learning how to loom knit, but you can do as many complicated or uncomplicated things on the looms as you can do on needles. Be sure and check out Good Knit Kisses YouTube main channel page. We have a playlist on there for beginning loom knitting and it starts off at beginner stitches and casting on and binding off all the different terms and things and works you all the way up until you're more comfortable to more techniques. So be sure and check that out and uh, bookmark the website for that. Okay, so we have gone and done our cast on row. We've done row one in an E-wrap. All you're gonna do is continue going around the loom, pushing these down, making another row in E-wrap. You'll continue on until you get to a certain length. Now that certain length is determined by you of how big you want it for the baby you want. Now, if you're not sure how big the baby's gonna be, you could make it into a regular newborn size or even jump it up to um, what the three month would be. If you want a newborn uh, hat that's a 13 to 14 inch uh, normal head circumference, the hat circle is gonna be 11 and a half inches uh, to 13 inches, which works perfectly for this one. Then you want the hat height to be um, five and a half to six inches. So we're gonna get our measuring tape out here and we're going to pull it out until you're at five and a half or six inches. And then you want to take your hat here, mark it where the zero is, or you can start at the top here. And I'm gonna start here and say six inches. And start at wherever your yarn is here and then hold it down and say, I have to knit until I get to this point. So all this is gonna start growing, 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 and it's gonna get down here. And when you have this tape measure held upside down like this, you can see if it falls at the two, I need two more inches left to knit. Now, this hat can be, um, the brim can be rolled up. If you wanna make it for a baby to, for three to six months, you could uh, make it from six and a half to seven inches for the hat, but I wouldn't go any further than that or else it just looks really, really big on a small baby. So if you're giving it as a baby gift set because these are really easy to make, you could make one that's say five inches long and then make one that's um, six and a half inches long and so they actually have two hats so that they can grow because babies grow really quickly. So continue on and I'm gonna show you how to do the drawstring cast off. What you wanna do is continue your rows and then we're gonna pause your video and meet me back up when you're ready to cast off or bind off and that is uh, how you take your work off of 
the needles or pegs, whichever way you want to call it. These are pegs. Some people call them needles because that's essentially what they are. And I'll meet you back up very soon. Um, before we go, just wanted to show you, um, I've knitted off all the way around. I've lifted the bottom loop over the top and now I'm back before my starter peg. And just make sure that you're gonna take these bottom two strands that was woven in for from your beginning row and pull those bottom two over the top. Okay, and then that makes sure that those are all on there. So now that this part is locked in, you could go ahead and safely cut that off and just leave a little bitty part sticking out. That's just fine. This is the inside of your hat. And this part right here, this is the outside of your hat. So the stitches are gonna look like what comes out here. So again, push down your rows. And you're gonna do this every time. And you'll find which way is more comfortable for you. You can hold it whichever way you want. And just to ask, answer a question that gets all the time when you're first starting off, you can go in either direction. The point is, is you want to always go in one direction on that particular project or always go on this direction in one particular project if you're knitting something in the round. Um, if there's special directions where you have to change directions, then do that. But um, you're just continue for one project in the same amount and you'll see different people um, on videos uh, going one way or another and it's really a matter of what's comfortable for them because the item in the end looks the same okay so pause your video and continue knitting until you get your desired desired length and i'll meet you back Okay, we're back and I have knitted about five inches for this hat here for demonstration purposes. And you can knit again to whatever your desired length is. So I'll stick my five inch marker here and bring it down to the bottom and where the zero hits down at the bottom of this hat. And this is what I was calling the right side of the work. This is the finished and the pretty side. And then the inside, the back side of an e-wrap is a pearl. And you'll notice that the stitch looks different. That's the opposite side. And you can learn how to make that to where that is on the front side out of here and it'll have a little bump on it. We call it a pearl bump. So this is what this looks like. Now I am using a bulky number six, a super, I'm sorry, a super bulky number six. And I can put that down in the description when I'm using below and on the video comments, um, the description for the video. But um, let's say that these ladders in between Let's say that this is too gappy for you. Um, this one's particularly is fine, but, um, but ten, depending upon what you actually pick for yourself, you may want to close that gap. So one way to do it is to add a third row of e-wraps, and you're going to knit the bottom two over the top, or you can knit one over the top two loops. And so if you do one over two, then that will close that gap for you. Now what we're gonna do is a drawstring cast off, and essentially what it's gonna do is pull these together and bind it up. So this top part will close inward, and then it actually makes a very bulky top. It's going to look bulky like this. If you wanna make a smoother top, we're gonna to do a decreased crown. So stick around after we do the drawstring, and we're gonna, I'll put this back on and show you how to make it more a smooth decrease. Okay, we're going to take our working strand and go around the loom, and then we're gonna cut it. Now, we've got our working strand coming from this last peg. We want to put it in between the last peg and the first peg, and take our loop here, take our knitting tool, and put it between this loop here, and scoop up this loose working strand and pull it all the way through. See? And then now we're gonna do the next thing. We're gonna put the working strand below this next loop and we're gonna pick it up and pull it on through. And when you learn it this way, you are learning actually how to do a purl stitch because this is the same way the purl stitch is performed. You actually pick it up and pull it through and then you would remove this loop off 
and then put this loop back on and then pull it back taut. Um, and then that actually creates the purl stitch. But as I stated before, um, I've got a nice slow video on how to make the purl stitch on the loom. So be sure and check that video out in the beginning loom knitting playlist. We're gonna continue going all the way around the loom. You wanna pick up all your stitches. Now, some people cut an extra strand and then they uh, thread it through with a tapestry needle. And in fact, a lot of instructions will say it that way. Personally, I, I don't think that you need that. And having to thread um, different kinds of yarns don't necessarily go through the needle very well. Like this kind of strand doesn't go through the needle very well. And then you end up having um, three loose ends, three cut ends like this to deal with at the end rather than just this one. Now because this is a homespun product, it's what we call a chenille. It has one little line, a thread in between and then all this extra roving type material, this fluffy material. And so the end can become frayed and you may wanna knot, put like a little bitty knot on it or leave yourself a long enough tail so that when you're done pulling the strands through and see how this busted up, uh, when you're done pulling the strands through, you're gonna need to make a knot so that it doesn't get too out of control. We're coming to the beginning here. I'm going to pull this last one through. And if you didn't go far enough around the loom, that's okay. Go ahead and take off these off the peg and then it'll allow you to pull on the strand to get more uh, length here. So you're going to actually take these off of the loom and the way, the easy way to do it is to take um, take your knitting tool and pop it off like that. So you're going to pop all these off the pegs. Okay. And then when we're done, we're going to draw string and pull this closed and it seals it up. And then you're going to knot it and then weave it through the middle part. I have a video for weaving that through. So if you want to watch that video more closely, but I'm going to go ahead and put these back on here and I'm going to show you how to do the decreased bind off. Okay, so I'm going to tie on this new color here because I've already um, run out of room because I was trying to do the drawstring method and this basically broke on me. And so I'm going to show you how to change colors and you can weave them in together, but um, it can, can create a bulkiness if you're going from the same color to color. But what if you're changing colors? So I'm going to go ahead and tie this on and uh, get it back to the back of this last peg here and then make another loop around to get this square knot here and I tie it right behind the peg and so that's going to fall on the back side of this stitch or inside the loom and now I can continue on my way and wrapping around and that knot is going to secure it and some people don't like knots and there's different methods to tie it on you just pick the method that works best for you I know that the knot isn't going to go anywhere and on this particular project um, it's not going to be seen so we're going to go ahead and e-wrap all the way around and continue in our design but for right now I'm going to show you how to um, how to do the decreased bind off and uh, what we're going to do is mark all of our pegs in sections and we're going to have four sections we've got a 24 peg unit here and we're going to have um, sections of six so mark the first peg as one uh, I'm moving this way you can go this way it doesn't really matter but the first peg is one two three four five six and then I mark my one peg for the next section mark it again do the one peg and then I've got another one back here and so we've got four sections of six 
So we want to take our knitting tool and move our number two, or all of our evens are going over to the odds, but we're just going on this first round, the evens to the odd, uh, two to one. So just the twos to the one. Move to the next section, and we're gonna do the twos to the ones. Move over. Now when you do move these over, be sure and just unwind. You're gonna go in a clockwise fashion with your pick and unwind this stitch and untwist this E-wrap here and that'll make it a lot easier for you for moving it over. So continue around and we'll meet back up. Okay, we're back and we've got all these moved over. We're gonna go ahead and wrap this next row. And whenever you come to a skipped peg, you're gonna skip it and then go ahead and wrap the next one. So you've got two here and this will have a wrap on it. And whenever we come back, I'll show you how to knit those off. Okay, we're going to knit over and we've got three loops on this peg and to lock it in, we're going to take the bottom loops over the top. So these bottom two loops are gonna go over this top loop. Okay, and then that's now locked in and you can go around the loom now and knitting the bottom loops over the top and locking all those in. Finish knitting all of yours over and we will come back and uh, do the next decreased row. All right, great job. You have finished the first row of the decreased crown. You're gonna move the four peg over to the three. Go ahead and unwind that, move it over. Go to the next section and take the four over to the three. And do this in each section. And then you'll see that you have in each section two empty pegs. We're going to go ahead and wrap over just the ones that have a loop on a peg. So we're going to go wrap, 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 skip, wrap, skip, wrap, wrap, skip, wrap, skip, wrap, 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 skip, wrap, and wrap. So now we've got all that done and we're going to knit over. And this peg here only has one on it. And this one right here, which was going to be a, um, this is a number three. We're going to knit these over. And if it's too tight, like this one here, we're going to take those two separately. Doesn't matter, you get the same result. Okay, we're on our last section. We're going to take the six peg and move it over to the five. And see, I'm just going in a different direction here so that you don't have to be so governed on which way you go. All right. Okay. So if you notice, you've got something on every other peg. So we've now gone 24 pegs. Go ahead and wrap these around, the ones that have them on there. We're gonna take 24 pegs and we've gone down to 12 pegs. So you have decreased your peg count by half. Okay, now that you've done that, we're gonna go ahead and knit over. And after this row, we are done. We're gonna do a drawstring bind off and you have half the amount of pegs that you need to go through the loops. So it makes that part easier. It does take a little more effort to do this decreased crown if you're not ready. Just do the drawstring and you know, try this whenever you're ready. And if you wanna try it on my granny round video, you can try that because it's the same technique. So now we're gonna measure all the way around the loom with our working strand and go ahead and cut off. Oops. Go ahead and cut that off. And we're going to 
drawstring this. So <clears throat> we're going to pick up the working strand up through the bottom of this loop. And you could do it from the top down too. Just do it the same way the entire way around the loom. If you don't, it's not going to drawstring properly. I'm coming to my last peg here. Go ahead and pull it on through. And if you find that you have, um, you're too short on here, again, you can take these off and then um, you can shorten up the drawstring. So go ahead and pull all these loops off the peg. They're safe now. They're not going anywhere. Okay. And pull this off. I'm gonna take our strand. Okay, now we've got our drawstring. We're just gonna pull it. Look at that. And before we finish, go ahead and put your drawstring on the inside. Okay. And flip it inside out. All right. Now this is the part where I had tied on. I'm showing you tying on another color or fixing your strand. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull this drawstring shut, just like on a pair of pants or something. And we're going to tie a knot. Just a simple knot will do. Because it's on the inside of the hat, if you wanted to, you could, um, you could just tie the knot and cut it off, but it's best to get it to go through at several uh, points with the tapestry needle and uh, make sure that it's really in there good. You can thread a tapestry needle and go in and out of here several times. I have a video on how to do that. Um, what I want to show you is, um, let's say I got it tight enough, then um, I'm actually going to cut this and let it just stay inside here because no one's going to see that. We're going to flip that inside it out and I want to show you what this looks like. See how this is nice and smooth it doesn't have um, any extra crumpledness or any kind of any it's not bumpy like normally drawstring would look like this so this is nice and smooth and then uh, I want you to see the rolled edge here this rolled edge here is um, is a part of sorry this rolled edge here is uh, this is a no brim uh, this is a brimless hat and it just has this nice little edge here people can roll it up and down but it has this rolling effect because it's an e-wrap stitch and um, this is just a great little basic first hat to learn and also to give as a gift again you could make them uh, different lengths and uh, it accommodates a different baby size head if you want a larger hat for a larger baby you can step it up to a 30 or 31 peg loom for a bigger circumference and for an adult you can just put in this 36 peg loom um, or there's actually a, a 48 peg loom from Nifty Knitter. Now it is discontinued, but all these different looms will make different size hats. It's the same technique for this. If you look up online, it'll show you different hat links that you might need. So I thank you very much. And also keep in mind, there are other brands out there. This just happens to be what I have. If you want to learn how to do the decreased bind off, um, the decreased crown, look for my other videos on these different looms. And I hope that helps you today. Thanks again for joining me at Good Knit Kisses. Have a great day and happy looming. Don't forget to subscribe and also check out our Facebook page for our Loom Knit and Craft Club for 24-7 of experienced uh, other loomers and crafters out there willing to help you and have fun posting your photos. Bye-bye.